So welcome to the final app of the course, that is Snapchat. Now, if you haven't used Snapchat before, the key idea is that you can send images to other people in a disposable way. So they're displayed to the user for a certain number of seconds and then deleted. There have been various controversies as to how possible it is to actually save those images so they're not actually as disposable as it seems. But despite that, Snapchat has grown into a business worth around $15 billion, I believe, at the time of recording this video. So it shows you how a very simple concept can really take off if done well. So we're going to start in the usual way over in Pass by creating a new application. So I'll call it Snapchat for Android and create app. There we go. So there's my application ID and client key. Now this time I've already downloaded the starter project. So I'm going to just unzip that there and rename it to Snapchat. And then we'll open it up in Android Studio. There we go. Now in terms of our login screen, I'm going to keep it super basic this time. So I'm just going to require the user to enter a username and nothing else. And what I'm thinking behind that is partly to show you a new login system rather than create one exactly the same as one that we've created before. But also think of this particular version of Snapchat as being more like a kind of disposable system. So Snapchat is all about being secure and disposable, though the images are deleted after a few seconds, etc. So I'm going to take that concept slightly further and imagine that two people might want to be completely anonymous on this system and they might just create accounts specifically to send and receive images anonymously and disposably. So let's see how we're going to do that. We'll start by editing strings .xml and putting the application key, application ID, sorry, and client key in there. And we'll do a quick rename to Snapchat as well. All right. And We'll jump over now to the data browser. I'm not going to do a connectivity test this time. I'm pretty confident that everything's been done right. So let's fix this first. Changing that to app compat activity. And then let's go over and create our login screen. We'll get a nice Snapchat image. There we go. I like the look of this one here. It's got the name in it and it's a good size as well. So we'll save that on the desktop. Then I might make it slightly smaller actually. So we'll go for a width of 400. And I'll do a little bit of cropping. It's a bit tall there. All right, so save that and then back over to Android Studio. We'll create our drawable directory. These sort of things should be fairly second nature to you by now. Get that in the finder. 
and then drag in our Snapchat image. There it is. Okay, and then we'll bring in an image view. for our Snapchat image, there it is. Great, happy with that. And then we'll have a text field. Actually, we don't want it to be centered better to work with different screen sizes if we put it below the image view like that. We want the width to match parent and then I'll just enter the hint to be username and then as with Twitter, we'll have a sign up or login button. And then as with Twitter, we'll have a sign up or login button. So you notice I'm just having a username there. So that's obviously a pretty insecure method and it will allow anyone to have access to anyone else's account. But you might be able to imagine situations where only a username is a good idea. And we'll just see how it works for, for demo purposes here. I'm not definitely suggesting that you should do this in, in your secure apps. So our onClick method is going to be sign up or login. And there we go. I'm just going to move that button down very slightly. Great. Yeah, a little bit more spacing there is good. Okay, so then it's just a matter of doing all our usual code. We'll get it from the Pass Android Developers Guide. So we're working with users and we're going to attempt to log them in first. So let's get that code in there. But we are going to need our edit text, which I'll call username. And then we'll set that up here. You're familiar enough with this by now. Oh yeah, it's just edit text. I don't think I changed the ID and we don't actually need one anyway. So make sure you choose the pass exception option there. So this one is logged in. So let's do a quick message there saying that we're logged in. And if login fails, we'll attempt to sign them up. There we go, we're not saving email or anything like that. But of course we do need to specify what the actual username is, so it's not Jerry. It's username dot get text. And what I'm going to do is just use the same string for every password. So that's essentially the same as having no password. And then we'll change this to new user so we're not confusing it with the existing user. 
There we go. And then the username again is going to be username dot get text. I think we'll need to convert that to a string. Same up here. Lovely. And I'm just using pass everywhere. So if it didn't work, as before, I'm just going to give them a general message. Oh, and we'll have the application ID, sorry, application context, as we're inside this callback here. Couldn't sign you up. Please try again. I have length long. And if it did succeed, signed up. There we go. So that should do it. We're pretty used to this flow of, of code now. Ah, except I do have an interesting error here. So it doesn't like, I think, the capital S in our file name there. So that's very easily fixed. Let's just rename it to have a lowercase s. There we go. And then we might need to update it over in activity main. No, it seems to be happy. Oh no, I think we should update that. And we'll do it from there. There we go. And there we go. So let's try that again. And there we go. I'm liking that. So let's just have a look and make sure it's all working correctly. So I'm going to do my usual Rob and failed. Let's just have a look and see what went wrong. Ah, yes. Ah, did you spot the error coming? I put all the code in the onCreate method, but I should have put it in the sign up or login. method. There we go. So public void sign up or login called by the button view. And everything goes in there. So I suspect what would have happened there is it would have attempted the sign up with nothing in the username field and therefore failed. Interesting why we didn't receive a toast, which I would have expected, but maybe I missed it. So let's give it another shot now, Rob, sign up or login, let's have a look. It didn't crash at least, so I'm feeling optimistic, there we go. So Rob is now signed up. If I tap it again, Rob is now logged in. So let's have our usual suspects set of users. All right, and not that we really need to, but let's just jump over to the pass data browser and make sure that our users are there. There they are. Wonderful. So we've got our very simple login screen up and running now. In the next video, we'll create the user list to find people to send our images to.